The text that I want to focus on for our meditation today is the Gospel for today. And I'd like to read just a few verses from that to focus us on this text. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word to his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? And after Jesus tells them about the signs that are there, he concludes with these words to John's disciples. And blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. And then Jesus speaks about John. And towards the end of that, he says, What then did you go out into the desert, go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one is, has arisen greater than John. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Let us pray. Loving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as we gather here today and recognise your coming, your coming the first time, your coming in our present time, and your coming at the end of time or conclusion of time, Help us to truly see the joy and gifts that you bring right now with your hand in this world. Open us and help us to live in this grace and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. If any of you remember the one-year lectionary of many years ago, this third Sunday of Advent was always called Gaudate. I don't know if I pronounce it right, but it's Latin for rejoice. So this was always called Rejoice Sunday. And in fact, the three-year lectionary has tried to make this focus a clear focus still that this third Sunday of Advent is actually a rejoicing Sunday. A Sunday of rejoicing in what God is doing and God's gifts. Rejoicing in what Christ brings with his unique ministry in the world. But joy, this Gordate, is different to the joy that we often naturally feel and see. You see, this is the joy of Christ and the joy of what Christ gives and his gifts to us. Let me ask you, have you ever wondered what Christ is up to or what Jesus is up to? Have you ever wondered that for yourself? Just give me a show of hands if you have, come on. I want to know whether there are a few who have, yes. It's so often, isn't it, we come to the mind, what are you up to? This doesn't seem to be right. What's going on here? And that is, in fact, where John the Baptist is at. John proclaimed it. This is one greater than I, one who will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire, one who's bringing about the correction of what's gone wrong in this world, one who's making it all right. And then John is in prison... And he's hearing that Jesus is wandering around doing these miracles and preaching these things, but it doesn't seem to match up with what John was expecting. If you do a little bit of research on first 
century understandings of what the Messiah was to bring about, you'll start to see that there was a complete political transformation scene. It was supposed to be Israel becoming that great, powerful nation that would bring all people to know God. Don't quite know how they were planning to do that exactly, but that's what they envisaged. And now, John is there in prison. Doesn't seem to be working very well for John, does it? So he sends a message to Jesus. Are you really the Messiah? Or are we to be looking for someone else? Are you really the Messiah or are we to be looking for someone else? You might remember that last week's gospel that John was out baptizing in the wilderness, in the Jordan. And he was demonstrating this coming into the promised land aspect through baptism, through repentance, and calling the people to repentance, calling the people to come in line with what God is calling for, come in line with what we're supposed to be. And now John is there wondering, what's going on? I thought this one that I pointed to, this Messiah, this Jesus, was the one to change everything, to end the corruption of this world, to make things right, to bring justice. And yet, John wasn't fully getting it. And I think that that's something that we struggle with, isn't it? We expect Jesus to make these changes and make things better and do it now as we see what is right and as we believe it should be. And yet that's not what we get in our gospel today. What we get is that Jesus came and that through his actions, he was demonstrating that the messianic completion was there. The blind were receiving sight. The lame were walking. Lepers were cleansed. The deaf were hearing. The dead were raised. And the most important, he leaves till last, the poor have good news brought to them. And half the time we don't see how significant those statements are. They're really talking about a change of life. They're talking about a change in being. They're talking about a newness of life and a wholeness of life that only can be brought by Jesus. And yet, we often would like things a bit different, wouldn't we? We would like things to be different in our world today. We don't always see these aspects of restoration as being what we're about. We want justice to us. Sometimes we think of, of Jesus as our saviour and we make it so personal just for me that we forget that Jesus is the saviour of the world. That Jesus is about a restoration of everything and a making of everything right and that he has actually done that on the cross. Jesus has already made it right. And we're in the process of having to live out that rightness that Jesus has done. Jesus has made it right. In fact, that's what Jesus is saying when he says, blessed is anyone who takes no offence of me. And yet, isn't that the strange thing? Jesus is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. The work that is happening with this Messiah seems to be so weird. Doesn't seem to be the truth that we would like to see. It doesn't fit our expectations. 
And yet, Jesus is right here this morning with each and every one of you. Jesus is right here entering into your personal journeys and the events that you are going through in your life. And Jesus is saying, I love you and I am with you. And that's the truth. I care for you. You are of great value to me. And yes, God's justice is being worked out even through you as you come to understand the love and grace that I give. You see, when Jesus talks about John the Baptist to them there, about him, this guy in the wilderness, he's actually talking about the one who is so important because he's preparing the way for what Jesus really does. But have you ever wondered what does that last sentence really mean? Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That passage today, this gospel here, speaks of what Jesus has done and is still doing amongst us and with us and through us. As we are in Christ, as we are in the kingdom of heaven, as Matthew calls it, we are in this process of being part of what changes this whole world, of growing a truth about God's love and grace for all humanity and for this whole world. We are being transformed through what Jesus has done and continues to do in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we are transformed, so too is our engagement with every part of this world. Since Jesus came not to save only those who are in his group, but he came to save the whole world and to restore the whole of creation to what God planned from the very beginning. May we grow in the trust of what Jesus is doing. May we see him with eyes of faith and may we live and work and walk in his goodwill. May we even have joy in seeing what we need to repent of and change through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour.